I look at Congressman Cotton's record, I don't see where he's passed a bill. I don't see where he's really accomplished anything in the House. Um, and he seems to have run for the House just in order to run for the Senate. How do you view his two tours of duty in Afghanistan and Iraq in the context of that? Hey, I have total respect for that. I appreciate that. I will never criticize anyone for serving our country, and I say thank you for that. But you don't see it as a qualification to become a senator? Uh, no, there's a lot of people in the Senate that didn't serve in the military. In the Senate, we have all kinds of different people, all kinds of different folks that have come from all kinds of different backgrounds, and I think that's part of this sense of entitlement that he uh, gives off, is that almost it's like, I serve my country, therefore let me to the Senate. That's not how it works in Arkansas. Hold on, well, hold on a second. Let me yeah, just... Hold on, let me get... Hold on. So, so he's got the sense of entitlement. What are you doing? I think he has... Do it. I think he has some gray poupon <laughs> right oh, here. I need to off, you get and, there and some caviar entitled? on the sleeve there. There's just... This sense of entitlement. I can yes. see it. I can it's see an air. It's like a, Don, it, it's a Donnie Doig suit. I bet he has his name <laughs> yeah. on the inside of that suit. Absolutely. Joe, don't fall off. That was Democratic Senator for Arkansas, Senator Mark Breyer, blasting Representative Tom Cotton in our Morning Joe States of Place series by Casey Hunt. Yeah. Um, here, the SNAP rep Republican representative from Arkansas and candidate for U.S. Senate. Congressman Tom Cotton. Now, I hope your mom and dad are watching this morning. I'm sure they've been up since 6 a.m. Well, my mom's been up since 6 a.m. watching, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how dads are. Uh, so, Aww. what part of Arkansas are they from? Where they live? We're from uh, the Arkansas River Valley. It's about halfway between Little Rock and Oklahoma. Yeah. The uh, Arkansas River runs between the Ozarks and the Washita's. And my dad's family's been there for about 150 years or so. Yeah. We're a small cattle yeah. farm. Yeah, a lot of people say of that region, people come out of there with a real sense of entitlement. <laughs> So, are you entitled? You, know, you can tell, no. though, Tom, you can tell when you hear Senator Pryor, who seems like a really nice guy. Aww, um, that was unfortunate he, he keeps what he said. talking about sense of entitlement, sense of entitlement, sense of entitlement. You can tell that they've polled it, and his, his political people are saying, keep repeating it. What's he talking about? What sense of entitlement is he talking about? I'm not sure, because I certainly didn't learn one growing up chasing after cattle with Lynn Cotton on that farm in Yale County. And, uh, you know, the last thing that my drill sergeant's basic training taught me was to feel a sense of entitlement. Now, you, you, you were a lawyer. You went to Harvard. You were yeah. a lawyer. And you so, decided to go and to Yeah, the 9-11 attacks happened. Artillery? My, yeah. Uh, uh, no, infantry. I mean, infantry. I mean, <laughs> yeah, infantry. I mean, yeah. infantry. Um, no, the 9 11 attacks happened my last year in law school, and that really kind of changed my path in life. Uh, I practiced for a couple of years and paid off my student loans, but when that was uh, done, I uh, left my law practice and I volunteered to be in the but Army. Why did you choose infantry? Well, the infantry is the core of the Army's mission. It's on the front lines, uh, and it's the purest form of leadership as well. In Iraq, for instance, I was leading a uh, 40-man infantry platoon in the streets of Baghdad, going out on combat missions every day. Lots of important jobs in the Army, but I don't think there's any more important job than the infantry. We've heard around this table time and time again, and Mike certainly has heard this an awful lot. We've talked about it, how you have kids who are 24, I mean, as old as I am now, 24, 25, 26, 27, running entire villages, sure. being responsible. I mean. Talk about going over there, the men and women that have returned, yeah. and what they were able to do in this horrible situation with the leadership skills. And this has yeah. nothing to do with you. I'm talking about vets out there that are looking for jobs right now. Talk about what they learned over there. Sure. In, in Iraq and Afghanistan, you have veterans who really have, as you say, were mayors of small villages uh, or governors of small provinces, working with tribal elders, working uh, with um, local sheikhs, trying to ensure that the people of those countries were supporting our mission. And that's, for instance, when we turned uh, the corner in Iraq and Afghanistan. 2007-2008 is when we were able to win the people over. And it's not just the concrete skills you learn in the military, like knocking out a bunker or setting up a machine gun nest. It's the intangible skills that we learn. Leadership, overcoming adversity, teamwork, dealing with ambiguity. Yeah. And that's why I tell employers, just hire a veteran. It doesn't exactly. matter what skills they learn. Hire a veteran. Don't they can learn the job skills. Better the leadership they have, though. Whatever you, you got, they face Absolutely. worse. Yeah, you also you, you have many, many Wall Street companies now hiring yeah. veterans. It's about time. But the war in Afghanistan today. Last uh, Thursday, there was a 19-year-old Marine killed in Afghanistan. He was uh, seven or eight years of age when mm -hmm. we first went into Afghanistan. In terms of an issue on the ground in Arkansas running for the Senate, is the war still an issue there? It is. Uh, Arkansans are worried about being in 
Afghanistan indefinitely, but they're also worried about Afghanistan or any other part of the world becoming a safe haven again. Because remember, Afghanistan and Pakistan is where Al Qaeda planned and launched the 9 11 attacks from. So, no Arkansan, like most Americans, don't want to see an indefinite war in Afghanistan, but they also don't want to see what, happen what is happening in Iraq right now happen in Afghanistan in a year or two because we precipitously withdrew. We didn't leave any training forces behind. We didn't have any basing rights for our special operations forces or for our unmanned aerial vehicles to conduct operations against the remnants of al-Qaeda that are still on the Afghan-Pakistan so, border. So, Tom, I'm sure, you know, we're, we're going to invite Mark Pryor on so he can he can have time around the table, too. And I'm sure, he, looking at the ads, he's going to say that you're extreme, anti-vet with your votes, that Medicare and Social Security are endangered. He, you've been getting a lot of these attacks. Sure. What's your response? I would say the only thing that's extreme is casting the decisive vote for Obamacare five years ago and still standing by it today. You mentioned Medicare. Over 100,000 Arkansans are on Medicare Advantage, and they're seeing their premiums increase or even losing access to their plans because Mark Pryor voted for Obamacare, which is leading directly to the Medicare Advantage. And he still stands by that vote today in Arkansas? He does. He still defends it. He still says it was the right thing to do. Aren't you glad you asked? All right. Mm -hmm. Congressman Tom Cotton, thank you so much. It was great to have you on the show. Great to be Tom, on. Thank, thank you so much. Thank Good you, to Joe. see you. doesn't seem entitled to me. He doesn't seem entitled to me. He seems sort of nice. Yeah. You're no watching Morning Joe. We will be right back. Down.